Gaffigan. Jim Gaffigan, that's right. I'm thinking of Andy McGaffigan in oh baseball. Oh, my it goodness. Was <laughs> it, it was much more, uh, what's his name, from 60 Minutes. Uh, was my intention. For oh, that. Andy Rooney. Yeah, Andy Rooney. Yeah, oh, you know, it really yeah. grinds my gears. <laughs> no, it sounds just like Gaffigan. Which is though. a little. Uh, uh, that sounds also funny. Family guy in there too. You leave that in there. That's how the show starts right there. That's right? how it the starts. Part, the part. Don't you dare edit any of that out there. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I right, leave that. I started rolling on purpose. <laughs> oh, you ever been to uh, Nobu, Steve Lowry? Uh, no. You, uh, ah, there you go. What does that even mean? You ever been in Nobu? <laughs> well, obviously he hasn't. You guys are not that hip. You guys are. No. You guys are fancy. We're not me- that hip that no. you think we're trying to get out. <laughs> you guys are fancy media guys that love free food, and nobody's yeah. ever tried to like swoon you. Wait at a, a minute. Anyone what? who's in the media, that free food does no, not no. come in. No, any no, no, no. I'm not talking about the actual games. I'm talking no. about at the games. The games. The food sucks. Ooh, I'm I talking about. I don't eat. I never eat at the press. No, box. no, it's terrible. Gee, really? Too many guys have heart attacks. It's oh just, yeah, it's crazy. No, I'm talking about like worst health risk ever. Your agents, now that you guys have this fancy oh, TV true, show, true. or guy like the but movers. As you told us, we're actually not on TV. The movers and shakers <laughs> have tried to like impress you, like you know, they, they said, "Hey, right. I want you come and do a story on one of my reclamation athletes that I just signed. Right. Let's go to these fancy John, dinners." Nobody's ever done that for you. Uh, yeah, you I guess I hate it. Me, we're ready. We already started the show. Uh, Are we on? Really? The show's been. St- <laughs> we're on, Schmitz. Where you been? Where you been, Schmitz? <laughs> Man. Thanks no, for joining what, us. No, what is Nobu? Okay, Nobu, Nobu is this fancy spot oh. in, uh, what is oh, it? Oh, yeah. You know, see, now uh, you know it, right? Oh, no, I know what it is. I All just right. never have been. Okay, well, that's where Indomitian Sioux was oh. courted oh, that's over right. the weekend with the Rams. Of course I don't know where that is. That's where TMZ goes and finds, like, the celebrities coming right. out of there. Gotcha. John, you know it, right? Nobu? I know of it. I have Exactly. Right. No, of it. Shmeez, you got money. You know of it, or you've been there? <laughs> I know of it. Uh huh. What is it? A restaurant. It's fancy. <laughs> Thank you. Super fancy. So when you're a oh. dude who's been playing in, you know, Miami, and you you got the you so see what ballers all like. You got to yeah. go and wheel and deal, and you got to bring yes. out the red carpet. That's what you go and you got to sell these guys. Right, right, yes. Right. Steve, now we're starting to see guys are like, all right, when you want to come to L.A., you better roll out the red carpet yes. because it wasn't just Sue that's coming to the Rams, mm-hmm. and there's talk of maybe Odell BJ. Beckham. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, hypothetically yeah. maybe. But the Galaxy made a big signing, too. Now these stars are coming back to them full, just like you and Tom. (laughs) Exactly. That's, you know, there was this narrative for a while that uh, right up until about this year that really now you can play anywhere and become a big star. And and most of this was based on LeBron. Well, he's in Cleveland, and he's a big star in Cleveland. Yeah, he's a big star playing in Cleveland. He's got two houses in Brentwood. Why Los do you Angeles? need two in Brentwood? Why not one Brentwood and one Malibu? In case well, you get lost. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's true. Then you get to the other one. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, for a while, a lot of Los Angeles teams were actually buying into this that, oh, well, we're nothing special anymore. And my, I well, think... Well, when you get wait, turned, wait, down, wait, my, wait, you wait, get wait, turned wait. down by Dwight Howard, no. that's a pretty... Right. Shot in the stomach. Well, that, oh, wait, first of all, do I could be another story on another? That, <laughs> oh my God. That's an eight-hour podcast with right. him. I'm, I'm talking about a guy right. who just wants everybody to love him. Right. Um, but what do you mean teams didn't think they were special? Well, I think what happened was previous ownership, uh, uh, the Lakers before Magic, the uh, Dodgers before this new group bought in, started to say, well, we're just like any place else because players can go anywhere and James Harden can become a big star in Houston. And, oh, I got and you. It, you see what I'm saying? You could be a star anywhere else. And so we're going to just sell yeah. our team. We're just going to sell our coach or just like any other team. This new group with the Magic Johnson, with uh, 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 Peter Gruber, uh, Peter Peter Gruber, Gruber, yeah. Gruber, who Gruber. understand the star power of L.A., you're not just selling that, hey, you can come to Los Angeles and become a big star. Obviously, you can. You're not just selling that when you come here, you'll have an opportunity to be on TV and all those things. There are other things that young people are going to be attracted to in L.A. There are only certain places, L.A., San Francisco, New York, where you're going to get this kind of concentration of creative people. It's creative, yeah. Exactly, yep. that can help you. And yep. there's another thing about L.A. that D.O.B.J.'s and the, and the Sioux of this world love. And this is even more than San Francisco or New York. In L.A., you can just be whoever the hell you are. We don't care. Even New York and San Francisco. What do you mean we don't care? What do we you don't care. Uh, you can be whatever you are? What Come on. What does that mean? Come on, you know that. Whatever you want. You can be. wear a toilet on your head, walk around in L.A. No, that's San Francisco. Ever. No, no, it's not. San Francisco is actually quite provincial. Well, oh, that's Berkeley. <laughs> People in San Francisco and New York will say, you got to talk this way. We, we dress this way. We do this thing. New York is the same way. Boston mm-hmm. certainly is. In L.A., you can be Wilt. You can be Kareem. You can be Magic. You can be ever, whoever the hell you want. If you're good at can what you do. Can you give me do, somebody relevant? 
like from this decade <laughs> when you, you want to compare? You can be Kobe. You can be Jack Nicholson. You can be any kind of movie star, rock star, whatever you are. And as long as well, Nick, you, Nick, you're, you're Nick talking Young about, was good okay, at that. You're Nick talking Young. about building an image, yeah. right? Exactly. Okay. And we're fine with that here. And I think for a couple That's years. That's a great point, though, Nick Young. Yeah, for a couple years, for some reason, we got away from that. We we forgot, and in, and in fact, that is one of the reasons we're doing this show. We talked about when we started this show, we got sick and tired of people outside of L.A. True. making the narrative, well, this is they what L.A. is, it. and L.A. isn't that special. It is a pretty special place to be, and I think that's what these teams we're and We're natives. These we've, we've understood it. We've seen it. We've, it, we've thrived it in ourselves with yes. our creativity. We, we, yeah. we've, we've gotten the opportunity to do things like this, other things that we might not even thought were possible just because we're in and around these creative people. And because there's so many stars here, you get the spotlight here without the microscope. In, s in sports in New York, you get the microscope here. Well, they always say that. Like you, The media. When you're in New York, like I've always wondered this. When you, like, uh, uh, For example, you watch movies, and all of a sudden, there's these always these press conferences, and 8,000 reporters are yelling yeah. at the goal. Blah, blah, blah. Where I've are those? I've never been Where in a situation like that. Now, That's when insane. the Yankee media comes to town, yeah. uh, there's some elbow thrown around back and forth, and there's some, but it's not intense. And I'm like, no. in L.A., it's like, oh, I'm not getting in it's here. You know, let let me polite. hold your microphone for you. No problem. Even We're here. Otani with the Angels, you see the photographers. That's Anaheim. They all there, just bro. line up really perfect. They're all nice to each other. So that's right. a but that Japanese media is a whole oh, different yeah. other way of right. doing things but also. Yeah. Right. But you know, those things in movies are no. TV shows. In L.A., like it's, it's, all right, we're going to interview you, but at the same time, it's like, okay, who's walking through here? Who's walking there? That's why the news, the Galaxy signed a huge star. So huge. What's his name? His name is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I thought he was. I, I thought he was Zoltar. No. <laughs> no. Zoltar. Zoltar. Tom just pulled out a thing. What's this called? It's a Zoltar have you seen the Zoltar machine. What is this? It's a fortune telling machine. It's from Boulder City, Nevada. What are you doing in Boulder City? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know. Is this Laughlin? Uh, no, no. Sometimes you just have to go to. Wait, Boulder. Zoltar that. speaks. Oh, th let's just move and, on. Uh, all right, John, you're from Middle America. Just Zoltar speaks. You know what this is? Zoltar. So yeah, but the, the, the only machine. one I've seen down is down in Venice Beach. Yeah. So. Okay, what is it? <laughs> Didn't you see the movie Big with Big. Tom Hanks? With Tom Hanks. Oh Remember that? It was a Zoltar machine that changed him into a kid. Oh, my God. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Smee, you ever seen Big? I have not seen Big. You don't, <laughs> just, just no, 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 no. You guys, you guys ramble on your own. I'm going <laughs> to no. Google Big. <laughs> no. 1987? I, I think it's earlier than that. <laughs> Just to put a bow Before on. I was born, I'm sure. Just to put a bow on this Let's LA No, thing. no, there is no bow. No, no, no you're not no moving bow? on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this. I, no, I'm not moving on. Zoltar, what, okay. Zoltar is a fortune-telling machine. It's at Santa Monica Pier. It's all over the place. And it was in the movie Big. Yes. Anyway. After a wish turns 12-year-old Josh Baskin into a 30-year-old man, 1988. Yep. Oh, so the year I was born. Oh, my God. I got married. The, the last year, year the Dodgers won a World Series, Zoltar helped them out. There you go. So All because right. the Dodgers winning a World Series, not because you have Zoltar in your pocket. No, because of this new acqu acquired player from the, Z the Galaxy. It reminded me of Zoltar. What's his name again? Zlatan. Zlatan. Where's he coming from? Well, he comes from uh, Man U, uh -huh. one of the most famous uh, club, one of the most famous clubs in, in the world. What country is he's he from? He's actually from Sweden. Sweden. There he's you go. He's actually from Sweden. Sweden. He, uh, you're going to love him because unlike most soccer players, he's actually pretty big. He's about 6'3", yep. 6'4". Six, six, he's a big dude. Kind of a Johan Cruyff, isn't he? How kind old is he? A, kind of a Cruyff. I think <laughs> he's he older. He's I like 37. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's 37. So, so he's, yes, yeah. it's 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 the typical MLS yeah, signing guy the, at the it's end. It's the Beckham but, end of his career. But I think he has a chance to be Robbie Keane, that kind of guy who still has a couple productive years in MLS left. But what you to love about him and what we haven't had in our life for a while is a superstar who embraces being a superstar we haven't had this since kobe left let's face it we have probably the two best baseball players of their generation playing here right now clayton kershaw and mike trout wonderful players nice guys huh? neither of whom neither of whom want anything to do with being a superstar they want to go out and do their thing yeah and that's all they want this guy actually yep. wants to be a star. Anyone who he saw pulled it. out an ad in the LA Times. Yeah. Talk to me. And it yeah. said what? Yeah. It just said you're welcome. You're welcome. Like that's awesome. You're welcome. That, that's the best line in in with LA name, sports since Mamba out. Yeah. With his nah, name. Mamba out was contrived. With the spelling of his name in the LA so is hyphenated, this? right? So they, this is like European. The like, LA I am awesome. Name. Right, because European soccer that. players are like, la, 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 no, I'm doing you a favor, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. letting you watch me. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you know him? No, 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 he knows me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love that about him. Yeah. And also, that day in the LA Times, he was front page 
I, you have a bunch of stuff going on. The tournament, you have spring yeah. training oh, winding down. Front page, uh, two A one and sports. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking, no, I'm yeah. talking about front page yeah. yes. of the sports, yeah. and then the news section, yeah, news. Right. where like Trump is there every single yeah. day. The economy, this, this, and that. This dude is on the front. They made freaking you pay attention. Page. To that. Let me. And, and by the way, let me make. And this yes, I looked at the newspaper that day. Yeah, the casual yeah. soccer fans. You, you, if you if you follow kind of the galaxy, this is the biggest signing they had since David Beckham, right? But this guy's totally different from Beckham. Beckham looks the part of a superstar. Is he like the more minute, like a George Best guy? <laughs> no, no, no. A hey, good bar right there, Hermosa. <laughs> Besties. Yeah, well, Best the was, the, was the big international player yes. came over to play for L.A. back in the day. Yes. And he the loved it. He embraced L.A. The, the pride of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Yes. There you he, go. he embraced it so much he killed himself by owning a bar in, Mar in Hermosa Beach. Besties. I used to get in there when it's I was like 19. like a Viking death. Yeah. 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 yeah the minute Beckham opens his mouth, He's, yeah, he's kind of like, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Rah. He's a nice kid. Like you black. No, this dude is cocky as can be. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, you're going to love this John. guy. And isn't this interesting? Because after he signed, I saw <laughs> I that ad. I went and did some uh, like I research on this, this guy. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. Oh, now you want to start talking. I Three shows in, and now, now you want, now you got a voice. All of a sudden, John. everyone. I want to hear John's opinion. Can't Let's you see Slotin is tearing us apart? Isn't that what's going on? Oh, sorry. I love the signing. I think the. The ad he put uh, on the back page Fantastic. was absolutely brilliant. And he is really, he's the epitome of uh, just cocky athlete. And I'm all about I'm, those I'm guys. I'm a big fan of cocky athletes. Yeah. One of my favorites of all time is Terrell Owens. I love that. Can't get more cocky than that. I love fake I, humble guys. Yeah. Fake humble is the best. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Uh, wait, you're a lesson. soccer guy, John? Uh, he's a I guy. got. I'm a Galaxy Remember? guy. I he's got into guy. it. Uh, no, no, but he, he got out here. here. But are you a soccer guy? You waking up at five in the morning to watch European and no, all that? No, I'm not. I'm not a big EPL guy. All right, there you go. See, I little respect that. I respect lesson. that. There's no need to wake up at five little, in the morning for anything. Little life lesson. Unless these guys are going to. Here we go. Golf. Talent attracts talent. In the late '80s, Magic Johnson is here. Wayne Gretzky's going to leave to Edmonton. Where's he go? He comes to L.A. Right, right. Kirk Gibson's changing his team. Where's he go? He goes to L.A. There were stars here who embraced it. And went for it, and I really feel like we've turned that corner again, and that people like we're, we're at that point again when anybody is on the market. L.A. now is always mentioned as a first uh, or a, a having a first chance opportunity. It doesn't mean they're going to get them, but O.B.J. comes on the market. Where's the first place you think? Oh, he'd he'd do pretty well with the Rams. If Bryce if Bryce uh, Harper came on, you right, think? Right, Oh, maybe the Dodgers. Right. There was a time not that long ago when. Big people would come on the market and you think, oh, we got no chance at that guy. And we have a chance here as we're turning the page, we're turning the market, and the drill is continuing to evolve. Oh, yes. And then you have your fancy opening right there, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, we're evolving. The birds fly. Uh, yeah. Rainbow. And here we go. And <laughs> episode four of the drill, you're coming your way. Your host, Bethel Duran, the one from the L.A. News Group contributor, Tom Hofer. Long time Los Angeles scribe, but that's about how we can oh, do it. Oh, look at you coming in with the voice and energy <laughs> today. Look at you, little star. What, what I shirt was are sick you last week. What, what shirt are you wearing? This is my uh, uh, Lancaster Jethawk shirt. From it's a home. polo. It's a retro. No, it's a. It's, or it's, a, a, it's a, a button up. That means up. you're part of the ownership group if you got well, that. Well, I actually I worked one day as a broadcaster for them. Did I, you really? I called a game for the Jethawks, yes. Really? It's, uh, it's out there somewhere. How did that go? It was for a, a column. Right. It was terrible. <laughs> I had a pre made home the run column call. Or and your, it worked. Or your column. You were Brock column Meyer. Right. Yeah. And then I had Charlie Steiner review it. <laughs> review my performance. Oh, there there let's just move. Where that's there coming. You know, right. This is a this is a retro Jet Hawk logo. And then you effect. realize how hard Charlie's job is. I did. Well, that's what he told me. And <laughs> I wore this. Listen, I wore As Steve Lowry is here. <laughs> oh, I also exist. Thank I you. I wore this to a game, a Dodger game last year, covering, and uh, Kike Hernandez recognized it because this was a logo. They were the Astros when huh? he was a Jet Hawk. Oh wow! He was a Jet Hawk. Yeah, yeah. they were. They used to be the Astros affiliate yep. up in Lancaster, yep. where the cool. ball flies. You, they've ruined many a career yes. of a young promising pitcher. Yep. He was an original Astro who knew a lot of the guys who was in. Who were playing for the Astros last year against him. So. And right now it is time for the drill. Boom! Fantasy sound effect. Uh, uh, Forty-five uh, seconds on the clock. Do we have it ready to go? Who's keeping track of the clock here? Uh, 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 is it Steve or is it who? Yeah, I'm looking at it right there. Schmied. Yeah, I think. Schmied. Eric, are you uh, on the uh, clock? Are we rolling now or now? Oh yeah. <laughs> We're doing the show, Eric. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Oh, what time so zone good. are you in? You still in BYU time? Okay, I'm warm. Get Let's get format. started. No, it's a new <laughs> format. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go, guys. Oh, man. Oh, thanks oh, for joining so us. That was all just practice. Yeah. Is it hot in here? No, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Hey, who's doing the clock for real, though? I got the clock. <laughs> all right, ready? Give me 45 seconds on the clock Boom. as soon as I, uh, Lowry starts talking. Hello. Okay. Baseball season ready to go this Thursday. Yep. Dodgers open up at home. Yep. 
and a name that we never thought would be back. And he goes to show why sports, you can never burn those bridges and, right. you never, and never bring your jerseys. Logan Forsythe. <laughs> Matt Kemp oh, Matt is Kemp. with the Dodgers. Oh, Steve Lowry's favorite guy. Let me think here now. The Dodgers are coming off a World Series year where they were so close. But I thought about this. You got uh, Turner on the DL. You got Clayton Kershaw just turned 30 a day right. or two ago. Right. He's been hurt each of the last two seasons. And you got Matt Kemp in left field. It's a feel-good kind of thing, but it also made me think, did the, are the Dodgers, do they have to start to look now that they've got a maybe two-season opportunity to win this thing? I mean, you've got aggressive teams like Washington with a fantastic young pitching staff, and you've got the Cubs still one of the youngest teams in the league, aggressively going after more talent. San Francisco ain't going to be as bad as they were last year. I'm wondering if the Dodgers need to, to now look Three, at the season two, with a bit of desperation. Good one. job not answering yeah. Matt Quint, Kemp at all. all okay. Right. Well, I think what they proved last year is the depth and versatility they have that will actually get them through. And, and this yeah. is the opening day roster is never the same roster that it is week two, week three, yeah. before. It's, it's so it evolves so much. It, they play like two seasons: the mid-season point where they make the trades, where they pull on the U Darvish and somebody else. Yeah. So it, it's really hard to gauge. It, you just have to win your division, get in the playoffs, and then it's a crapshoot. As long as they can do that. I think they'll be fine. But you're right. There is an age problem that, and an injury issue that they've got to keep a, a track on and get these younger players in there, the, uh, the Buellers and the Verdugos and those guys. Just keep them ready because, as, as Bellinger proved last year, you've got to be ready when your time comes. And that's the first question. You're done. You don't get a rebuttal in this. This is the drill. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, okay. Rebuttal? All right. NFL. There's nothing to rebut. Look, for the longest time. <laughs> I'd always pay attention to ESPN, and yes. they would show that football was king, and it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, off-season moves. And I'm like, why do people care about the NFL in March? That's yeah. what I used to think. Oh. Now that we're here in L.A., yeah. I see why, because there's moves being made. The Chargers made a couple signings. The, the Rams are making the big splash. Yeah. Is L.A. becoming that football city now, Lowry? I, you know, uh, so obviously. In Clock, Dominic, start. I'm oh, sorry. Dominic Started. Sue just signed with, the, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the Rams. And it's what we spoke about. He actually took less money to come here. He said it advantageous for his career, not only, I think, uh, long term, but also to play alongside Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald to be right. here. And um, I see the Rams again. They're actually using that Seattle model, which is we've got a young rookie quarterback under a small contract. We're going to spend a ton of money on defense and try to win in the next couple of years. I, I think the Rams are in a mad about two-season rush also to win a Super Bowl because um, Jared Goff's going to have to be paid. And when he does, you're not going to be able to sign Indomitian Sues of the world for $14 million. So I think the Rams are actually – You're going to see them very two, aggressively going after a lot of people, and they could win. Who knows? I'll give my take as a former Rams fan. Oh, fun. and I, I'll, I'll make this short. I have not embraced the return of the NFL to Los Angeles. Chargers, Rams, Raiders. It's it's something I still I've got this separation issue with the team when they left. Then now they're coming back and they want everybody to love them again. I'm just it, I'm lukewarm to it. It's like, you know, an ex-wife. Well, there are a lot of people out. like that still. Well, I, I, I wonder if that's true. I wonder no, if I'm just by I myself. No, there are a lot of people like that that are so still. I wouldn't say the younger people are like that, yeah. uh, but there's still a lot of people of your there's generation a lot of us that, have that, that still hold that resentment. Yeah, it, I, I don't want to. If I wasn't getting paid yeah. to cover the NFL, I don't think I'd be paying attention to it's it. It's a hard thing for me to pay attention History to. History lesson, what kids don't understand is the Rams in the 60s. Oh, jeez. Oh, I no, love no, the Rams in the 60s. They were a yeah. glamour team. They were up right. there with the Lakers and the Dodgers. Yeah, Forsum, the Pearson, and Roman, Roman Gabriel. Gabriel. It was awesome. They were that was kind of thing. It was and beautiful I to think, watch. I think with this signing. Yeah, there was three TV stations in the 60s. And the aggressiveness that they're showing, I think they Browns were also a perennial power in the yeah. 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and polio. Things changed. Polio was still good, yeah. But, but the fact <laughs> is the Rams are also being mentioned to get OBJ. Can you imagine if he comes here? That offense. Is Rock star. If, if you trade Sammy Watkins for OBJ and with that defense, oh, goodness. I'll end it this way. The Raiders still are the best NFL team in L.A. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest fan base. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, Always will be. College basketball, Final Four this weekend. Yes. Good Catholic boys like yourself yes. representing what? Hawthorne High? Hawthorne High, which was not a Catholic school. No, but there was a lot of Catholics there for you. No, well, there was enough. All right. And? Pius X. Pius X. Oh, which no longer, which no longer exists. No, it does now. Now it's St. Matthias Pius X. Slash Pius X. All right. But you guys are good Catholic parishioners, so obviously you're on team Sister yeah. Jean. So we're on Sister yes, Jean team. absolutely. But I'm good with Nova. I'm yeah. good with Villanova. But right. that would be, uh, can you imagine Nova and Loyola? Well, in the I, final? well, here's a question. 
45 seconds for you, Lowry. Yes. Actually, no, give me 30 on this one, Schmidt. Okay. You got it. All right. Does the Cinderella making the Final Four draw your interest or kind of, eh, about it? Well, number one, it absolutely draws my interest. Number two, Loyola is not a Cinderella. Anybody who actually knows basketball and watch it, they are a very good basketball team. But I 11 is not supposed to get to the Final Four. I, they were they were underrated. It's, it's a whole different Yeah, Evansville, thing, underrated. <laughs> no, it's they were whole, underrated because of their, their conference. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a whole different thing now. They... You have these one and dones. I, I've heard people say that well, Loyola can't beat Michigan because Michigan's such a big power. You're not paying playing the whole student body. You're playing those five guys who come out, and Loyola <laughs> plays beautiful, five, four, disciplined basketball. Three, they can beat anybody. Two, they can literally beat anybody. One. Yeah. When the tournament started, I predicted that there would be a team between eight and eleven win the championship. Have a great shot. Oh. Go back. Yeah. And well, but then, as I was looking at the final eight, I mean, there was a nine, a nine, and eleven. You know, there yeah. was a lot of really possibilities. That was my point. Was the, was that many in the final eight? I expected at least one more to get to the final four. I got to ride Loyola at this point, just because of the fact that they, these kids have been together. They know how to win games. They know how to use the court. They're smart kids, and you know, they got the power of Sister Jean behind them. Right. It's 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 just such a great story. Of course, I don't expect them to win. They probably got a 25% chance of winning against Michigan, and then probably even less if they make the final. But it, you got to pull for them. I got no. I, I, to me, it's a pick them against Michigan. Did you see them yeah. against Florida State? Yeah, yeah. They I, just because <laughs> just because you come from a huge state school doesn't automatically make you better. That that game was awful. In fact, I will say this: with the exception of Loyola, this has been an awful tournament. The basketball has been egregious. It, it's not that fun to watch. No. It's, it's, it's very unfundamentally sound, which we want to talk about and later. I'm not, and I'm not talking when people say fundamentally sound, no. you think it's boring. No, no, I'm talking about Loyola players can catch a ball, pass yeah. a ball, dribble yeah. a ball, and shoot and yeah. make a ball. Yeah. That's one of the things I hate about college basketball now. People can't make a 15-foot jump shot it's anymore. Embarrassing. There you it's go. It's embarrassing. Keep, keep yelling at those clouds. No, and that was <laughs> the drill. That was a three-point mentality. Get off my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> In my day, the peach baskets were there. Yeah. One day you will know my right. There used to be no three-point line. Look at you, right? Uh, I, I've heard about that. If only Dunking there was a should be illegal. Yeah, it was. Now it's time for the business <laughs> with Tom Hofarth. You have the one thing that you were – really caught everybody's eye this weekend was the way that the Florida State coach and yeah. respected reporter Leonard Hamilton, Dana, Dana, Jacobson Dana Jacobson had a back and forth. And it wasn't anything that was that should have been unraveled like that. I've seen plenty of instances where the losing coach gets interviewed after a game and he's a little grumpy. Well, what was the scenario? What happened? Well, the scenario I was, the was that uh, Florida State lost the game to Michigan here in L.A. And it was because uh, there was a four-point game with about 11 seconds left and they just sort of gave up. They just uh, they let instead of fouling. Yeah, they let oh. Michigan sort of pass the ball around, and and you go like, okay, what happened? With eleven seconds? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was four point game. So four, yeah. so yeah. she huh. immediately asked Coach Hamilton after the game, "Did you think you could foul? Keep it?" And he looks at her like she just had three heads, and it, it didn't make any sense. He said I don't something like, "Do you honestly think that's what lost yeah. us the game?" Yeah. Do you honestly? Yeah. So the thing was, uh, people thought that he was being rude, but I think he was just he just did not comprehend the end of the game situation. He kind of gave up. He threw in the white towel, basically said, I mean, and, and, and his team was coming back. They were getting back into the game. It was just an odd way to end the game and even more odd that he couldn't conceptualize what she was asking. She didn't get flustered by it. Right. Uh, she kind of persisted, not in a mean way. She just kept saying she kind of rephrased it a few times. Like, the guys were talking about it on the, on the game. Anybody who knows basketball was wondering about It's one about of those that. things that you just go, what what happened? Even the viewers at home had to go. And he, and I, he basically was saying that he he thought the game was over. It was a valid question. And he question. later apologized. And I didn't think yeah. it, was just an, it was just a very odd thing to see. But that's it's an absolutely valid question because yeah. this is college. North Carolina State won a national championship by fouling yeah. at ends of games. It was an absolute valid question. But this is the most common thing you get when you're involved in sports media. People always say, oh, why do you have to ask that mean question? Yeah. The guy just lost the game. She didn't ask it in a mean way either. It but was the, more point, of a the point is you guys want to know. You were sitting at home saying, gee, why wasn't he doing yeah. it? This is one of those things because you have to see it live. You see how, how uncomfortable it is. Well, that's our lives, man. Yeah. We have to be involved in that. That's Plus, like she would have been called out by guys like me if she didn't ask the question. Exactly. And the, the deal is. The viewer likes the steak. He just doesn't want to see the slaughterhouse. <laughs> well, that's the slaughterhouse, man. Yeah. It ain't pretty when you have to go through it live on television. Well, now, and they but show it has to be asked. One of the things in the media these days that's interesting to me is they show live press conferences after games with coaches stuff, which I'm surprised there's not any sort of delay or, or something because there's so much that can come out of that, right. especially 
when a reporter who's a little more, uh, let's say, on deadline and a yeah. little more intense and he needs an answer, he starts peppering the guys with questions. Right. He gets the mic, and, he, and, the, and the coaches or the players just look at him like he's a, in, a complete idiot too. Right. Those confrontations now become part of the media, and they become post-game stories. I don't think that needs to be seen. I think it's more of an edited situation. It's fine. I don't understand why they, they need to do these live press conferences afterwards because it sort of impedes. Most of the time, live press conferences press conferences are for media guys who are trying to right. show, hey, look, look at the question yeah, I asked. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, they're I was on here. Yeah, it's they're like all showing off. It's, uh, another, it's another one of these you know TV about. vanity ego things where you have to ask the question. Again. And I don't want any part of that. The best questions and answers you get are one-on-one. -on -one right. Away after, from, after away from that whole mess. Nobody is giving away a good right. question or a good well, angle It's like we were talking else. about earlier. It's like when you see a TV show or a movie about the media, and they have these giant press conferences, and there's everyone in there all sitting uniformly trying to ask. It, it's never like that. Never, ever like that. Do you have a tirade this week? Uh, You're feeling better, so you probably don't I'm feeling know. much better. Yeah, I'm not that angry about much. I'm just glad to be living right now. <laughs> what about your uh, Redondo Beach Cafe? Oh, Redondo Beach Cafe has new ownership. I don't know if you guys hang out down there. Are you, no, you we're not rich. In? Well, it's a big hockey hangout, and uh, the two guys that own it, uh, the Montreal boys from Greek, Greece, have decided to give up the ownership. Ownership, they've given it to a couple. Montreal new guys. boys that are have Greek roots, there, John. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Montreal, very diverse city. Can I yeah. take your tirade by the way. just for a gentle tirade? Well, th th my tirade is yeah. I, I'm upset that the boys have left oh. and they've turned it over to new people. It is a, it's a great place to hang out and watch hockey and all sports. I mean, they love to use the Canadian feeds. I don't know if that's going to come back anymore. Mm. It's, 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 a yeah, hopefully it's uh, one of those things where, so you know, the, your, your, your childhood uh, places that you go to keep disappearing. Yeah. It's just another one of those. I just want to mention my son's uh, down from San Francisco, which means we've been watching a lot of professional wrestling. <laughs> and he loves this. New Obviously, he loves this new Japan pro wrestling that was on Sunday. I was wondering how you're going to get a part of the business. <laughs> all right, all right, good. Big event in, in, in at the Pyramid in Long Beach. Oh, oh that's right. That's wait, right. New Japan wrestling. Yeah, yeah it's big. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. become big. I and, forgot but about they that. did right. that thing that everyone does, which is so they're 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 showing it from Long Beach, but they're showing shots, uh, establishing shots. For Manhattan Beach, oh, yeah, yeah, Huntington yeah. Beach. I, oh I mean, they, this everyone does this. Hi, here we are at Staples Center. Are and you should. Show, and they show oh, Santa they love, Monica they do Pier. That. Yeah. Good. People think that Staples Center right. is next to the Santa Good. Monica Pier. Look, you got to think big here. <laughs> no, 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 no. you got to think big. No, if it's you're not so even close. You, not no, even no, close. no, 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 because on TV, you're selling. First of all, you're not going to sell Long Beach. Right, because well, you're not going to sell Fontana for an you for an you have to, event. No, because you have to establish Queen the audience. Mary? Come on, nobody Wait. knows that. What do you mean? People no in one, LA know no it. If you're <laughs> showing a broadcast, okay, <laughs> guys behind the scenes, Whoops. John and Schmidt, you guys work behind the scenes. You guys are the ones usually getting those establishing shots. When you go to a market and you're working that, you're selling big picture, right? Absolutely. Mm. So yeah. if you're going to go niche market and show Second Street in Long Beach, <laughs> why? No. Don't get mad up there for the whole Queen party. Mary, though. No. Queen Mary, I didn't know the Queen Mary exactly. was here until I moved Look, to California. This okay, for this show right here, yeah. if we had establishing shots, we would show Hawthorne High. We would show Downey. We would show, like, Lancaster and Palmdale, whatever. Right. But you're showing a national broadcast. Yeah. What do people identify with? Oh. Hollywood sign and uh, Santa Monica. And the beach. Yeah, but I think people have been spoon-fed the Santa Monica thing. They think that's a big deal. Dude, there. the Rose Bowl show Santa Monica. Exactly. Because there's people in Ohio, in Youngstown, who say, one day I'm going to go to Hollywood and I'm going to be a star, not realizing the freaking studios are in Burbank. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I think Truth? Isn't there no. enough, John, isn't there enough in L.A. to show without showing the Santa Monica uh, Pier? What else is famous in L.A.? There's big scene shots. Oh, Hollywood. It, it's Hollywood it's going to be it's going to be Hollywood. It's going to be beaches. Yeah. It's that's what people outside of L.A. You're not showing the 710 freeway, man. It's yeah, funny. you're not well, showing the 110, 105 interchange 110 as scenic. cool it is. <laughs> people get a skewed view. I'll tell you, when yeah. I, wor I worked for the we National. We do have a 110 scenic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, uh, a 110 USC going into downtown scenic. It's yeah. downtown just traffic scenic. Okay, a, da <laughs> a, a downtown scenic is awesome. When I worked for the National back in the 90s, I remember one time they were going into uh, San Diego, and they said, hey, we'd like you to be the columnist in San Diego. And I said, well, dude, I... I live in Los Angeles. I just had a kid. I just bought a house. They said, well, we're looking on the map here. They're right next to each other. <laughs> it is. Shoot on down. No. The, to that, that's what I think. People yep. think Santa Monica and Staples, like, you know, yeah. you just walk from one yeah. to the other. They're not. If you're in Santa Monica, they give you tickets for a Laker game. You're not going. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, right. The, the Warrior fans, and they've had a, a legit gripe yes. with it as well. Every time they have a national game, they show San, San Francisco. Francisco. 
and everybody in Oakland Oakland is like, "Mm, what's going on? (laughs) Right. Right. Now, that's a legit brief. brief That's a legit gripe. That one, that's two different cities. Yeah. L.A.'s a big county. But that's just it. They stereotype it in these five different shots. Maybe show a little bit. I mean, when you. What else do you want them to show? Can we go? The pyramid itself? Yeah, well yeah. They did show no, the no, you'll yeah. you'll show that as in you're coming in yeah. from the pyramid at, on the campus of Long Beach State. Look, when the Galaxy play, they don't show Carson; they show Santa Monica. Yeah, we love Carson. Nowhere no, near, you not. I'm, I'm, I'm the mayor of Carson. I don't even love him. And there's nothing to do here. <laughs> I'm, I am going to run oh, into years. Studio is in Carson. I'm yeah. going to run into years. We're on a landfill. Can you feel it shifting? <laughs> It's not that <laughs> I, ser- I certainly feel the heat. Yeah. Are you guys done with your I hate L.A. demographics? I love L.A. We just wish L.A. had a different set of uh, uh, Viewmaster Icons. slides. Okay. And, what, oh, my God. And I'm, I'm curious, slides. John, I want to ask you a question. I've always wanted to ask someone who's not here from here about this. What, do, you re- do you really, like, when you're not from here, do you look at the Hollywood sign and go, oh, that's great? Like, I've never understood the fascination with the Hollywood sign. I. It's tacky. It's a brand. In, in a driving brand. here today. Yeah. I looked, I get on the 110 in El Segundo, and, yeah. or not the 110, the 105, and I look to my left, and I go, you can see the Hollywood sign. It's a good day. There you yeah. go. Yeah. There you had it. It's, it's not, still cool to see it. Like, that's about air quality. But here you go. He sounded like, yeah, about he sounded like Saturday Night Live version of the Californians, <laughs> right? I get on the 110. So, 110 to the 105. Just take it all the way, bro. <laughs> got off at Wilshire. And it's a freeway, not a highway. Yeah. And that has been the drill. Oh, no, wait, no, that was been what? The, the, business. Business. the business. The business. The business. All right, so now we're growing in popularity that people want to bribe us. So, Tom Hofar, oh, where you cool. send all the stuff. So excited. What do we have? We have a box. <laughs> From who? <laughs> Here, don't hurt your back alone. there, old man. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right. A bo- oh, it's a ha- large box. This actually has your address. Large yeah. box. You do live in Redondo. Yeah. Wow. Please don't give out his <laughs> address. Look at this right there, Hermosa Beach Saloon. This is from the Clippers. The Clippers have sent us something. Why? What did you do? Uh, How did the Clippers end up on this Amy show? Amy Millstone, who is a oh, Amy's awesome, executive yeah. with the Clippers, saw the show, and she goes, i got to send you some Clipper stuff because she saw the gear. Amy so is Amy, awesome. Former the, Dodger for PR person. For people of a certain age, this is like opening Al Capone's vault. Amy this Millstone, awesome. pride of Northwestern. She was a rower, so she's watching. She was. Oh, no was kidding. She? Yeah. she was from big Cleveland Indians fan. Y habla, yeah, she is Cleveland. She y habla Cleveland, espanol, yeah. mi amiga Amy. What do we get, whole party? I don't know. I I swear I don't know. Oh yeah. Some Clipper t-shirts. Gear, Clipper t-shirts. All right. All right. Might even be a might even be a small in here. We're not wow. sure. Wow. You got a Schmidium? More Clipper shirts. <laughs> Ooh. Oh oh. I a caught a hot dog. Uh, there's a letter to talk or a uh, uh, card. Where do you go ahead. Oh, <laughs> wait wait wait. Hold on hold on. The the Star Wars bobblehead. Bobblehead. All uh, oh, right. Now who, Milos. Milos Bobblehead. Very nice. Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> what? I just opened up the l- card that came to Tom in Clipper Stationery, right? Yes. It says Tom has this. Oh, and mind you, nice. look, I uh, I was a Clipper intern back in 2002 with Olawa Candy. Oh. Um, I work at Spectrum Sportsnet hosting the Lakers. I worked to cover the Lakers for a lot of years. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I played down the middle. I don't have favorites or anything else. Tom, exclamation mark, don't share with Beto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not, but <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is hilarious. Here, can you hold this? I'm sharing. I'll take the bobblehead, yeah. Uh, wow. I'll take the <laughs> All right, very nice. This is the hot dog, nice. hot dog shirt. I really like that a lot. Amy, nice. you're the best. Amy Thanks, also Amy. used to work at Cal State Northridge. She's fantastic. <laughs> yes. The bobblehead, I'm taking that. Star, anything Star Wars related, I'll take it. Even though Fair I've never enough. seen Star Wars, right. I know this memorable. You've never seen any of the Star for Wars? For what, man? For what? <laughs> I didn't say for what. Oh. I mean, I've seen bits and pieces, but I've never sat down and actually watched one. You saw the Star and the Wars, but never together. Yeah. And Star Wars. It's the Star Wars. <laughs> And then, you know, to make them the Spanish, oh, RTD2 yes. is really Arturito. Oh, <laughs> I ordered that the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take Star Wars because that's, that's, uh, you can resell that for a high. All right. A lot of money. <laughs> All We're right. not reselling anything. All right. What else we got here, Whole Farth? Because we, we did get into story time last week. Story time. Well, you remember I talked about when I was a Laker ball boy. And yes. uh, I said I think I even had a shirt. I was uh, digging through some. Well, uh, actually, I believe the term that people really found on Twitter that you liked was that Tom was a pimp. Oh, that's true. I was, was a pimp. Nice. I was a pimp. Yeah. For some of the players, taking, of the players. <laughs> taking notes up to the forum club. While I was wearing this shirt so that I could get in without an ID, <laughs> I was a team attendant. Oh, my Lord. You, okay, you were what, 12? Yeah, no, I was in junior high. This? I was in junior high. Now, look at the size of this. 
extra small. We were trying to think if Schmitz could oh wear this. Oh my! This is more authentic than anything Mitchell and Ness has wow. ever had. Oh yeah, yep. But the team attendant is really what's classic. This is fantastic. That's nice. Could your has hands this make ever it been the washed? hole anymore? Has there, no, it's never been washed. Schmitz, you can wear you can I, wear this, right? I'm afraid I'm afraid so of wearing me. it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there. I did, I did. Oh, hey. <laughs> Put that on. Put that on. Put on the jersey. <laughs> Schmitz, put it on. It, it's possible. It's, it's fine. He can fit into that. Now, if you rip it, you own it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and you have a basketball. Oh, net. wait. But we wanted to get into a segment today called History Lesson, right? Oh, oh you, is this history? So we're going to say part that. Of history. It's part oh, okay, of history. Oh, okay. All right. So that was uh, Tom's memory lane as Schmitz is trying to put on the jersey. That's those of you watching on the YouTube. Oh, there you go. Oh, for those of you at home. Oh, my goodness. He's really going to do it. He's What's putting it on. And if you guys want to send any kind of a. Uh, oh, my uh, God. It fits him like a glove. <laughs> He's a 30-year-old man. Where <laughs> <laughs> He's an extra small Laker <laughs> team attendant now. That is awesome. <laughs> wow. That's nice. Come I'm up ready. with one of those, Amy. That's nice. Schmeeze, I put the Clippers. And he did <laughs> that over a sweatshirt. I know, so over like, another yeah, shirt. So we got the Clippers gear. Over we got the Lakers shirt. gear. So wow. we, are, we are not playing favorites here. If no. you guys want to send anything else free to Tom, feel free. I will not take it. Lowry, I know you'll take it. This will all stay yeah. here. It'll all stay here yes. in the cave. And if you guys want to write it on the card, according to Amy, do not share with me. Yep. Feel free. Okay. My goodness. Now, 45 years ago this week. Mm -hmm. The greatest. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? This is our, our memory. Cause we History. This, this is going to get sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. That was story time with Tom. Now it's. <laughs> L.A. Sports History. We've done Santa Anita. Yes. Oh, Santa oh, <laughs> Look at this. We got sound That's effects. All I've Thank ever you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, LA. We've done a uh, Santa Anita racetrack. Yes. Sports arena. Yes. The forum where we found out yes. Tom was uh, sneaking people in through the back doors. Yes. My Him friend. His fr oh, your my friend. Fr my friend Bill Snyder, who followed me now on Twitter, says, I'm glad you told the story about Yeah, I saw get, that. Bill got, yeah. People are really getting into the yeah. Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Bill, wanted, Bill wanted me to tell a story. I'll do another story time. Has to do with Leon Wood. St. Monica High and Billy Barty, but that's another. <laughs> Let us build an audience so we can lose it first. Yes. All, right. Yes. All right, all right. And, and then also uh, the guy who does our cartoons. Yeah, Jim Thompson. Jim Thompson, uh, Thompson Sports Art. Go follow him on Instagram. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, the first rendition had me at about 385 pounds. <laughs> we went back and forth on Twitter. We are beefing now. Yes. And, oh, uh, nice. Oh, yeah. He's he, got a gun show. Now he's got a gun show, and yeah. I am down to 175, yeah. which is also lying to people because now people are saying, "Hey, yeah. you can." Fit also, into a medium. An, uh, so an I'm, I'm upset about you, Thompson. All right. <laughs> get it right. No, no, the more you get him mad, the more he draws. Yeah, the more he draws, which is good. The more <laughs> yeah, he stays employed. The more yeah. He draws. There you go. So <laughs> the, the go, that's on Tom's header. It looks fantastic. Thompson Sports Art uh, does a great job. Now, right. Farteroffthewall.com. Yeah. All right. Which is where you can go and check out the review of the show. We also, all the links, everything we talk about, the crew puts it together. Farther off the wall. Uh, and without doubt, keep sending us the tweets. Keep sending yeah. us the information. There's a, a lady who I believe is a set designer who wants to. She keeps saying she her set design was oh. something. So, she, so here's our design. Yeah. So all this stuff is going on in the background. Going up there. All right, now it's time. It's story time. Yes. Tom, you have a basketball well, net. First of all, it's a history story time. Yes. Oh, it's a history. The story historic time. moment is 45 years ago this week. This week. UCLA wins its 75th game in a row, mm -hmm. their seventh straight national title. Yes. But what it's year? It's remembered 1973 for Bill Walton making 21 of 22 shots. In the final against Memphis. In the Memphis. final against Memphis. Yeah. They were tied at halftime. He just took over the game in the second half with this fundamentally beautiful uh, off the glass, just the perfect stuff. Uh, it was. It, if you can find it on YouTube, yeah, obviously you can, you can. You can. You can just see. Uh, this is a, Luke's dad. A virtuoso <laughs> performance. Luke's dad. No. And that's the sad thing is that Bill Walton <laughs> now is thought of as either Luke's dad or the crazy hippie who kind of <laughs> does basketball games. Yeah. When in fact, Bill Walton is the second greatest college basketball player of all time, just behind Lou Alcindor slash right. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Right. I can tell you, when I was a kid playing in Catholic school, basketball is number one when you're at a Catholic school. I was a guard. I was pretty good. And my coaches would actually tell me to watch not Jerry West, not Gail Goodrich. They would say, watch Bill Walton. He's the most fundamentally sound basketball player you will ever see in your life. And it's a little sad to me that people don't realize yeah. what an awesome player he was. He would have been one of the greatest NBA players of yep. all time, but his feet let him let him. If down. you ask Chick Hearn who, who his greatest player that he watched, he, he would write off Wilt, Kareem, and, and, and he'd say, and you know Walton. You know, Walton is, could have been. So he had ankle problems, feet problems? Feet, feet problems, problems because he grew so fast. Problems. And because and then he had back fusion issues. Oh, yeah. And it, really? It was, it and he wasn't, it wasn't taken care of well okay. back then. Right. Oh, I remember Walton as oh, a Clipper yeah. player. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right. And barely with the Celtics. By the Celtics, he was right. off the bench guy, right? He, right. he actually won sixth man of the year with that uh, yeah. 86 team. Yeah. That is probably yeah, one of the greatest teams of all time. Rem- I barely remember yep. that. Yeah, that was a great team. That was uh, that is truly one of the greatest. He teams identifies of all time. with the Celtics almost more than any other I team. Know, it's funny. It's weird. He won a championship with the Blazers in '77. So he was drafted by the Blazers. Yeah, number yes. one overall. Well, he oh, he was number one overall. Yeah, and he won a championship with the Blazers and would have won the next year. And then in the middle of the season, he got hurt. Blazer again. mania. Yeah. That's what it was yeah. called in Portland. That team was down 0-2 to the, the, the uh, Dr. J Sixers yep. and came back and beat them in four. One of the great teams of all. So time. he had. Bad feet problems, bad, feet, bad back bad, bad. problems. Horrible, yeah. horrible problems. And, and you know a stuttering problem. You know what's sad about <laughs> it, too? <laughs> what's sad about it, too, is when you when you watch this thing of him going 21-22 of Memphis, I don't think we're ever going to see that kind of no. big man again. No. Low low block, getting the ball, pivot, beautiful footwork, you nice know, touch it, off the board. In some way, it's almost loyal to Chicago. It have the yes. same sort of passing yes. skills, and it's just they just lack a, a big man like Bill. But Bill could n- take over a game, but not in a in a – in a showman, a showy way, he would just do everything. It was, it was like Tim Duncan before Tim Duncan. He was just this. No, I'm being serious here. Player. Yeah, I've you know reading John Wooden books and all yeah. the stories about how he told Wooden, you know, I'm gonna let my hair grow, and Wooden right. said, Hey, no, well, it was all, nice yeah. having you on the team. Yeah, right. But it was the time of the year, the time of that period. Yeah. He grew up in San Diego. Yes. Right. Went to UCLA, like right. but he had a huge stuttering problem, right? Yes. Like really, really bad. Yeah. If you had told anybody during that time, or even when he was at Portland, he's going to become a very famous broadcaster. There's that would no have been way. the most insane thing you've ever So how did he get over it, Tom? Pretty much Ralph Lawler told, you know, gave him the speech class of speech therapy and taught him how to just slow down, get your words out. It was just an interesting transformation. It, uh, Bill f- says the the person who uh, turned him on a basketball as a kid was Chick Hearn. He could listen to Chick Hearn's games down near Helix High. But Ralph really uh, established him as a broadcaster just to, by interviewing him and just taking the time, the, 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 the lessons and everything, and then just Bill just went crazy from there. Yeah, I think he's made up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all How all is he as a person? I, I've only met him professionally. He always seemed I very work, nice. I've worked with him on a lot of different projects. He's so... Um, giving and he's so much a hippie i mean that's the best way to describe him he has a teepee in the back he lives in this house on myrtle avenue down in balboa park has teepees in the back and so my story time goes back to about 40 years ago when i was at bill's house there was a big cycling event down in san diego at this time and one of our riders got invited to cover the event so bill after the race had a big party at his house if you knew where bill lived you were invited to the house so we're just overrunning the house it was just hilarious to see bill in the in the, in the patio playing ping pong and the teepees and everything and he has these four little boys and Luke is the littlest of the boys and so as we're leaving we l- noticed that in the driveway there's about an eight foot hoop basket where the kids are playing and we go we need a souvenir from Bill's house and we don't we don't want to ma- do a, uh, anything mean or st- so we took the net off of his <laughs> We took yeah, the net off Bill's hoop. Yeah, that wasn't mean. That wasn't mean. As we're thinking, we're oh, Luke is never going to miss this. <laughs> you took the net? We took the net off why of his house. Why did you think that We didn't even mean. cut it down because we could just undo it. I don't <laughs> but, know But why it takes, like, a few minutes to yeah, take that down. Yeah, it did. And nobody said anything. Nobody. Because everyone was in the house party. This is when the driveway. Bathroom tissue or something like that? I don't know. A we jersey? Needed something, we needed something from Bill's house, and this net has uh, survived all these years. Does he know you have it? No, he does not know I have it. That's why I want to come clean to it because it is Wait, is that what you told the cops? It is Easter oh, week. We needed it's Easter Bill's week, house. right? I need to kind of right. redeem You need myself. to go and tell that story to Luke Walton. Oh, I'll love, I'll love to tell it to Luke. He, he, Luke will probably laugh. He's going to cry because oh, he, he probably he came outside to right? shoot with his brothers. That's what's there's killing nothing me worse all these than years. shooting right. a basket with no yeah. net. And you get the sweet swish and all it is is just But you know what? I, silence. It was just the, in the moment and I regret it. And I, no. you know, 40 years I'm coming clean about this. I have the Walton net still. I will put it back up at their house. Nice. If Bill will allow me and and Schmied, you get to keep the uh, jersey. Yeah, keep the jersey. <laughs> keep it. Yeah. So the next show we're gonna do it from Tom uh, from Bill Walton's house down in San Diego, yep. oh. and he's really a, a huge cyclist. Yes. Uh, he's involved oh. with the Challenge Athletes Foundation, where you have uh, athletes who have d- uh, who lost their limbs and are they're out there doing triathlons and yeah. cycling. He's really involved, and every single day he rides his bike all over the place. Oh, so he loves right. riding. Fascinating guy. As yes. As especially considered a couple years ago, he. He even said he thought about taking his life yes. because of the pain, pain that he was in. He wrote a book about it, explaining all that issue. And I think that's why he embraces life so much. Every game to him is a new opportunity mm-hmm. to just say, I love life. Yeah. And it's just it, some people can't handle it. I mean, you got to know Bill for the whole story that Bill so is. So interesting, too, that one of the ultimate kind of counterculture figures eventually comes back 
to be probably the, the foremost kind of adherent of the ultimate establishment figure, yep. John Wooden. And going back to Jim Thompson, Jim did a really cool portrait of Bill that when Jim did the, the, the picture of us five, yeah. he put it in the background. So there's this picture, you have to look really close. It's a picture of Bill Walton, he, I think he's purple, and he's sitting in like a, in a, a, a zen pose. Right. He's kind of just meditating, and it's, it's kind of this weird, psychedelic, kind of really oh, cool. I didn't even notice that. So we'll get that, that illustration as well, and we'll put it up here, because I want to kind of get it up here. I guess uh, I was so distracted by my drug addled <laughs> histrionics that I didn't <laughs> notice it. <laughs> and that's why Thank we you, win Jim. Emmys here Emmys. on the drill. Now, Tom, I have a, I have a question yes. for you. What makes you think that Bill Walton is going to let you back into his house after you <laughs> steal <laughs> from <laughs> him the I last don't. time you were there? I don't have to go in his house. This is in his driveway. I can do this stealth. I can go in there, <laughs> hang it up, and just run. Because the whole point is Bill Walton's going to say, now, Tom... I had to console my four boys. It's true. They had to go to it Big Five. It was a life five. lesson for them. Boys, people steal. But you know what? You you brought up a great point. Is there anything worse? You call no. all your buds. Let's meet at the park. Great. We're going to be there. I'm sorry. And you show up. Stop it. I know this. No I know this. No net. And you I have to this. play with no net. Where no. Did that go in? No. no. Yeah, no. no. That right. no That's the worst. I guess so we, we work with a thief. Yes. I guess we just knew at the time no, Bill had the resources. Last week he's a pimp. When do you guys go to church a lot? Last week he's a pimp. This week he's a thief. What? Next week what? It's Catholic. It's Catholic. Embezzlement? Week, yeah, it's Catholic what? Boys oh, Week. No, he works in the media. There's no money to be embezzled. <laughs> no. no. You guys done? Uh, you're, you're done with uh, all your uh, sins? Yeah, was that a good story? Because if it <laughs> wasn't. That was. I'll that was good. That was good. Quality story. I've quality come to bring quality. quality. But by show 10, I'll be out. I'll, be, I'll yeah, shot right. it all out. By the way, I just want to mention something real quick. This is our fourth episode. You know what is amazing to me? You, br you brought it up much earlier. We have talked each time uh, on each episode about professional soccer in Los Angeles. <laughs> this is amazing I know, that I, this it, is yeah. happening And right Saturday now. night, yep. on Saturday afternoon, Afternoon's LAFC, yeah. mm -hmm. Galaxy go at it as Stub the Hub. Stub yeah. Hub Center in Carson. Yeah. El Trafico. El Trafico is what uh, John has called it. or it's heard El Trafico? El Trafico. Hey, I dig that. Isn't I that think cool? it's a great name. I've yeah. been on Stub Hub. Does it have an official name? No. I don't believe so. El Trafico is great. El Trafico is great. Up, the, the minimum is 100 bucks per ticket. It's already been sold I got a guy. Why are you buying stuff? I'm not buying. I just wanted to Dude, see Dude, I, I took my daughter to California Adventure, and he's like, how much did you spend on that? I'm like, why would I spend money to go places? <laughs> All these what? years this around, is, this you is like working with Leopold and Lowe. No, I mean all these years you're around, masterminds. you got to know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> yeah, you got to know simple a guy. It's simple as that. I, I I got a guy who's got a guy who's got a guy. Right. All the friends that you stuck into the forum, why? Because they got a guy. Yeah. Well, see, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I, I'm way doing it wrong. Which everything apparently that uh, everything I'm wearing right now, this Travis Matthew shirt, free. These <laughs> new balances, free. These jeans, but when you free. Were, well, paid, your paid, Tom paid, shirt, paid. free. Yeah, free. I, I That's why he gets a box. It what do you project. get? I get nothing. But when so what are you not? contributing to the show here, Lowry? But his run on when it's always sunny in Philadelphia it never got him anything <laughs> either. <laughs> right, nothing. Wait, you were on? Where's, my, where's Miami? Yeah. yeah. You weren't always sunny? No. Did but you? Charlie Day is, and everyone thinks you that see, I'm you imitating were. Charlie Day. Say. I'm 20 years older than that dude. <laughs> were you on Always Sunny? He's imitating me? No. no okay, wasn't. one more time. Give me your chat. Were you on Always Sunny? Sure. Exactly. Thank so we have you. an actor here. So if you want to send him <laughs> stuff, he yes. can get you into Wasserman or CAA or whatever yeah. you want. He can get you into Nobu, uh, where the Ram sign and Don McGinn sue. It all comes so for Schmeeds, who's Stephen on the phone. Why are you on the phone, Schmeeds? I'm on a little call right now. You're oh, on a call? Sorry. <laughs> are you really sorry on a call? A little call. Little just a little call. one. Hey, I have a question for hey, you guys. Hey, you up? Right. It's one of, hey, I just saw Hey, We're you about up? to go to you 50 up? minutes. Wait, Here we go. Wait to <laughs> participate on the show. You up? Look at my tight shirt, man. You up? <laughs> I'm up, I'm up. What's your question? <laughs> hey, guys, I have a question. Yeah. So from the audience? For you guys. Okay. 26 years ago in Venice Beach, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson yes. shot what movie? Uh, we gonna we sizzle. <laughs> we gonna <laughs> sizzle. <laughs> Was it called a a Cajun Agents Can't Jump? <laughs> <laughs> That's close enough. I'll take that. <laughs> I was instructed to watch that movie on how to properly shoot free throws, and it's because... <laughs> so pretty. Yeah. So pretty. So pretty. <laughs> Just leave it up there. Just leave uh, it up there. What is the yeah. White man can't jump. What is the know. greatest moment in that movie that involves an L.A. sports personality? Uh, Which I found out recently. I don't know. Rosie Perez, I have. No. The great Herald Examiner, now deceased, uh, columnist Alan Malamud, uh, playing Jeopardy oh. with Rosie Perez oh, and getting right. his clock. So it wasn't oh, Rosie Perez. Yeah, see, yeah. That, okay, that's going to be. All right, yeah. Episode yeah. five, we're going to talk about Alan Malamud yeah. because. Good. Whew, 
We, so many L.A. T- no, but I he must have died when I was like what 10, 11 years old. Mm. But I would read them because he had the notes on a scorecard yes. right. in the L.A. Times, and yeah. I knew about him later on. A wonderful man too. Yeah, and nice uh, he he was in a bunch of different movies. Yeah, yeah. And a bunch. Oh, of, he was in yeah. Cheers and stuff like yes. that. Yes, he was in. Uh, and he kept lines. Oh, well, yeah, we'll go over that. The one about the Beverly Hills uh, homeless guy. Oh, uh, down and out of Beverly down Hills. Hills. He was in that one, running down an alley just to see Alan run. <laughs> Was it, it he was, was a, a big guy. To see. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So we'll talk about Alan Malamud <laughs> yeah. in yes. week five. But uh, the the one I was talking about was Mark Marcus Johnson was in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. White man can't jump because right, he he's was. the one who went he to the liquor the, store. He played the thug. Right? He played no the man. thug. Yeah, yeah. No man, it ain't me. No, no, it ain't me. The reason I found that out is I did a G League game with Chris Johnson, his son, oh, yeah. who said he was an extra in the movie. <laughs> And he's like, well, you, we all know, you know, my dad was the guy running down the street with the gun. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah, of course. I, yeah, your dad, who, who's legend at UCLA, <laughs> right. playing the NBA. Right. Yeah, let me. It's not me. It's not me. Oh, White yeah. man can't. Oh, we oh. can get all the kinds. No, of No, that's how he's listed. Now the, that was an iconic in LA the credits. Movie. It's oh, listed yes. as Chris Johnson, or yeah. listed as Mar- Marcus Johnson, Thug. That's that, that's his title. title. Yeah, Thug in the movie. See, <laughs> John, that's the scenic you want of LA, right? Yes. Seventy yeah. Seventh Street. There you go. <laughs> Yep, there you go. Episode four of The Drill. Send us your comments, good, bad, positive, whatever you guys want. Send free stuff to Tom Hofarth. He will distribute it with Steve Lowry. <laughs> if and you Schmied. don't, he'll just take it anyway, so you might as well. And, oh, no, and I will not. thank you to everybody watching it, and thanks to Schmitz for being able to squeeze this show in yeah, while he's great. on a conference call. Thanks. Squeezing a lot, lot over there. Episode four of The Drill. Like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, all that wonderful stuff. Where? All of it. YouTube, Facebook. Are we still taping? <laughs> <laughs>